Hi, Jamie. Hi, Eric. How are you guys? Hi, Lisa. Eric says hi, and he oh. shouts out to everybody who's watching. All right, awesome. Eric, guess what we're going to talk about today? We're going to talk... <laughs> Hand up like this, he goes, uh, the afterlife? Yes! Oh my gosh, how did you guess that? Of course, you know these things. Uh, Eric. Do you yes. <laughs> do you create your own afterlife? Uh, he actually said that's partially true, but not 100% true. That's like saying, do you create your own life? Yep, you do because you have free will and you make your own choices, but. There's some thin. There's some thin web of energy that helps you stay within a certain structure. So mostly yes, but and how do you create it? A hell of a lot easier than on Earth. Is it formed uh, in some way? I mean, do you somehow form it? or prepare yourself for a certain afterlife while you're living? Because there's some people who believe in hell or they're going to have to go up there and battle their, their demons before they get through them pearly gates. <laughs> yes, actually. Your belief that you create on Earth helps shape your entrance into the afterlife. Mm, he's giving me a, a weird picture of when you turn on a faucet <clears throat> and the water comes out of the faucet but you turn it down really low that the water from the head of the faucet mostly stays connected and then it starts to separate and turn into drips mm -hmm. so he said as you're transitioning there there's a thicket did you say thicket thicket maybe <laughs> thicket of time, a collection of time, a, a short kind of window in your transition that you're still maining, maintaining a lot of contact to the faucet. You know, it's streamlining. There's no separation. So you're still holding on to ideas and concepts that you would have maintained or created when you were living. You kind of still react as a human being. But then you get so far away from that that you start to separate. Right? It's still you. You're still water. You're still the same water that came to the faucet, but you're not connected to the faucet anymore, the pipes or the structure of that life. Okay. There's something different. Mm. So what you believe will play out through your crossing, but it's almost inevitable. Nice words today. Yeah, I tell you. He said, he said he's trying. That it's almost inevitable that you begin to question your environment and your surroundings and you become you become more connected with he said let's call it the reality of what afterlife is so you don't really get to shape the whole damn thing <laughs> but you definitely are fully in control of your own transition oh he's still chattering uh be it the mm -hmm. tunnel of white light be it lights on lights off be it dreamlike, whatever your crossing takes shape as is something that you've created for yourself, that it would be safe for you to experience it in that way. Okay. Now, what is your afterlife like? Your personal, I know everybody has a different afterlife. Well, Eric, what is your afterlife like? Can you describe it in fairly great detail, not just one sentence? Sentence. <laughs> yeah. Just, just mouth it off for a little bit. Because, okay, what my afterlife is like. He still has his home where his family is on Earth. He has his home base. That's where he says he goes back for comfort, he goes back to check in. This is not true for every spirit, but this is the way that he likes to work. And he said he spends a lot of time 
learning how to interact with people on Earth to help them learn more about their life on Earth by showing them more about spirituality. He goes, you know, it doesn't even have to have the term spirituality attached to it. It's just helping them learn more about their perspective on life, really. He goes, yeah, I like that a hell of a lot better. Stick with that one. All right, will do. Now, when you when you say you have this home base, this, which is kind of a mock-up of your original home here, do you, how, how do you create that? It's not I, a mock-up because I go there to the house. Oh, I thought you created your own, like, Afterlife house. You can, yes. You can mimic whatever you want to in the life that you had before, you know? Like, if it was pizza, then you could uh, create, imitate the taste and smell of pizza. If it was a career or a passion, you can do all those things and more. There's more opportunity uh, where where I am then on earth. But no, I didn't create my Texas home up in heaven. Okay. Uh, tell me more about what it looks like, what is in your surroundings, etc. Because while well, I spend a lot of time with the people that connect to our blog. No, no, what it looks like, Eric. Oh, what it looks I don't, like. Do you have but... trees or meadows or gas stations? What? <laughs> He's like cocking his head. It's like, <clears throat> woman, <laughs> woman, I was getting there. He goes, since I spend a lot of time with uh, the people who are engaged with our story and our blog, I spend a lot of time transcending space and time. Ooh. I'm sorry, I laughed because the way he said it, it was like, oh, like I was very glorified. And he, <laughs> he busted up laughing too. <laughs> but he spends a lot of time transcending space and time and doesn't spend quite the amount of time of what you might believe, like sitting in heaven. He does these air quote things. There are Buildings, grass, landscape, trees, color everywhere, color you've never seen before, color mixed with other color, swirls and dotted and effervescent. Nice. Effervescent. Do you have a thesaurus or something with you, Eric, today? <laughs> I think he has a dictionary in his hand. <laughs> well, does it feel real over there? Does it feel real? He's thinking. He goes, I could ask you the same damn question. Does it feel <laughs> real over there? Yes. It feels real here. You know, even though you can't just reach down and just smack your arm or pinch yourself, it's it's the same sensation of being alive and kind of in your own boots. Okay. Now tell me some of the... Oh, do you have a girlfriend there? You should be really proud of this, but he just kind of drops his head and goes, well, you know, so maybe. <laughs> maybe he goes, I go, you should just answer your mom. He goes, you know what's going to happen, Jamie? If I answer my mom, then she's just going to ask me more questions about my girlfriend, so. Oh, I promise I won't. I just want to know if you have one. Yes. More than one? No. No two-timing? Good. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Tell me some of the things you do there, I mean, when you're there. I know what you've been doing to help the world um, understand the human experience, but what do you do there for fun, for whatever reason? Oh, I said I like to travel. I like to go to extreme places, <clears throat> tops of mountains, skiing. Oh, traveling into other dimensions. Meeting people. He says, let's just call them people for <laughs> simplicity's sake. Meeting other people from other dimensions. Okay. I don't know what he's doing. He keeps showing me this building. 
And it's really, really tall. It looks like it's made of glass. Mm -hmm. uh, clear glass. It's not reflective. It doesn't look like a mirror, like a skyscraper. It looks like you're, you're a window, you know, but the whole thing is made of it. It's interesting because you don't really see um, uh, structure support beams. You know, um, you don't see really a skeleton. It just looks very see-through. He's talking about if you want to experience something new, that's pretty much the place that you can go that holds all the connections or informations to other lives, future lives, past lives. Because that's what I mean when I say lives. <laughs> and so you can connect to your own or to others, you know, but you have to have a certain amount of, I don't know what you just meant. Can you say that a different way? Uh, he's trying to explain to me that you can't just go in and look at anybody's lives like some of it's protected information, like you have to have a pass or you have to have permission to see most of the information. But for you, in control of your own things, you're available to all of it. So is this like Akashic Records or? Yeah, he calls it the library of lives. Well, I've never seen you go into a library. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> he goes... He thinks that you would be really surprised to see the shit he does. I bet so. Uh, stop talking about it. Stop giving me the image. Okay. Anything else uh, that you can do there at all? Can you go snowboarding? Can you... Can you imagine yourself going snowboarding? Yeah. Then, yeah, you can do it. But yours is not just imagining it. You feel everything, right? The snow, the... Yeah, that's the trick. If you're on Earth and you use your imagination, it doesn't really fulfill all five senses. Like, you don't manifest it when you imagine it. Intuition is so strong and so connected to the soul and the spirit in the higher dimensions that even you just imagining it, it manifests it. And are there things that people, that you have to have a joint manifestation uh, for to, I mean, there might be a road or a building or how about a beach that, uh, you know, you just don't create yourself? Is there something, something yeah, that you can experience important? other people's manifestations? Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty cool because then you get to kind of get a slice of what their memories are or where they enjoy to be. And if more than one person enjoys that space and you give it thought and attention then it's going to stay in place longer. Like for me, if I imagine going snowboarding, if I imagine getting on my bike and I imagine a track for it, and when I'm done, it's done. It doesn't have to stay in existence. It's the best damn recycling program ever. I bet so. He said that with such joy. He goes, but let's say I do it, five of my buddies come and join me, and also we got people who want to watch, then what's been created kind of stays in existence because at least one or more person is staying engaged with that concept or that idea. Are there things that are there permanently because there's constant attention to it? Buildings? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, but, like the library. Oh, I, I would say that. Yeah, I, I thought you would say that. Um. What is a what are the uh, things that your friends do for fun? Do you have friends over there? I guess. I do. Yes, they're not tight or anything. <laughs> but yes, I hang out with several different people. You know, a lot of it, a lot of who I touch base with are people that I've met through the blog, and. What, like through, their, their loved ones, you mean, that have crossed over? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And through helping them, you know, I get to learn more about not just their lessons and what they need help with, but what they want to do in the afterlife. 
it's wild, Mom, because when you're on Earth, you're kind of driven by your own goals, you know? Like, you see yourself going somewhere, and you make plans for it. And he's like, for me, where I am, I don't need that kind of drive. You know, I've got a passion, and my passion is reaching out to people on Earth, but I don't necessarily have these steps in place or this progress report that I have to check off. I don't have to meet anybody else's needs ever. Pretty good. You don't have any report cards. What? I bet you like... what, with D's on them? <laughs> well, hopefully so. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a wonderful part one. Stay tuned, everybody, for part two of The Afterlife. Eric says, peace out. Peace out. There we go.